Hello and welcome to Vitush Academy. Today is Monday, 20th of April 2020, and today I'm going to show you a bit about how to work with Django following the tutorials of Django Girls. Okay, so what exactly is Django Girls? Pretty much go to google.com or in my case in Chrome and simply write Django Girls and the first website you would reach is djangogirls.org clicking on it and waiting a bit for the load you would see pretty much that Django Girls is a non-profit organization and a lot of other interesting information about them so what do they do? They create events where they teach girls and women how to program with Django so the good thing about these events is that their tutorials are really step-by-step -step tutorials so today I'm going to follow a bit one of their tutorials, the Django tutorial, and I'll pretty much take a look at it and see what's going on. So I just clicked on that link and I'm going to choose a language. As you see, I have clicked already on Bulgarian, but I'm going to click English for the video. So this is how the tutorial looks like. To the left, you see links, to the right, you see stuff explaining pretty much what is going to be like uh, done at the end. So installation, it shows you how to install Python here. Pretty much installing Python on Windows is kind of easy. If you are one of the guys working with Mac, I think this is OS X. I think it is installed by default there. With Linux, it should be installed by default. Yes, installed out of the box. And installing Python is something I cannot show right now because I have already installed Python on my machine. But I'll nicely continue to the next section, uh, how the internet works. Pretty much explanation about how the internet works. There are cables all over connecting computers in data centers and this is really what we can say about the internet in one sentence. Okay, introduction to the command line. This is something interesting. Uh, this is our command line. We click Windows and R in uh, Windows and then we write CMD. And this is our command line. And it is waiting for our comments. For example, if I write on it, who am I? It's going to answer this beautiful thing, desktop something Vitos without H and these are some basics about it which I'm going to skip currently and let's go to the more interesting part concerning the introduction to Python so introduction to Python simply on the command line you're requested to do the following uh, write python simply python not python 3 python 3 could be written if you have python 2 but in my case i only have python so here you're going to have your first python command uh, just for a second i'm going to change a bit the outlook of this so it's better for the video okay i really hope this is better so here we simply write python and now we get information that we're in python 3.7.5 and warning, this is Python. This Python interpreter is in Conda environment, but the environment has not been activated. So pretty much it is there, but it's not activated. So some libraries might fail to load to activate this environment. Please see Conda IO activations. About the environment, we are going to do it exactly here on Django installation. We are going to install a virtual environment. So bear with us. Now I'm going to try put something in five minutes about Python and how it works. I'll simply start these three lines here are three signs bigger than show us that we're in Python. So whenever we say three plus two, it gives us five. Whenever we say 40 divided by two, it gives us 20. Whenever we say 41 divided by two, it gives us 20 because we only want the decimal sign, uh, the whole division, integer division with other words. If you take a look like 44 divided by 5 is 8, but 44 divided by 5 integer division is 8. So something about strings, you can concatenate strings like this. Hello there, plus 
Vitosh. And it returns hello there Vitosh. You can also multiply strings. Hello there Vitosh. Uh, let's say times 3. Hello there Vitosh, hello there Vitosh, hello there Vitosh. Not very fancy, but we can also put a new line here. This is the symbol for new line. Like this, I think. No, it's not like this. Uh, hmm, what was the symbol for new line? Okay, so after some research, I found out how to do it pretty much like this. Hello there Vitosh. This is the symbol for new line, as I told, but unfortunately it doesn't work when it is written like this. So if you want to put like hello there Vitus three times, put a comma here, not there but here, it should be like this, hello there Vitus, multiply it by three. Okay, and we go further, there is a function called upper, so we can say upper, and it puts my name with upper cases. Also we can say the see the length of my name. Six letters. And pretty much that's the whole summary of the introduction to Python. Oh no, that's not it. There are also other stuff. There is like a sorting a list. Like this. Copy paste. For example, lottery like this but if we say lottery sort and we say lottery the numbers are sorted mm, we can also reverse them here nicely yep and what else we can append to the list and see what's going on 199 is there and we can print a, num a number of the position. So in lists, list starts with position first. So with the zero position is three. So whenever we ask the zero position, we are going to have, in this case, 59. Because after appending and reversing and sorting, this is what we got. So print lottery should be. 59 if my keyboard starts listening to me. Yes. And okay, this was about lists. Not a lot. I mean, most probably you should take a quick look. This is really something quite difficult. This is if this is the first time you're hearing lists. So you should really take a quick look. But the idea of this video is to get up to the end of the Django tutorial, so let's continue. Dictionaries. Dictionaries are hash tables. If hash tables doesn't mean anything for you, imagine a normal dictionary like this. Participant, or let's simply say dictionary, and say Vrata in Bulgarian, Dor in English, and let's say Zogat is window. So this is a typical Bulgarian English dictionary. So whenever I want to say how is what is brata, it would answer dog. Mm. Okay, it should be like this. Yeah. And what is Pozogat? It would answer window. If I want to say, hey, show me all the keys that you have, it would say, these are all the keys that I have, what time for Zogets. And if I want all the values, it would tell me all the things that it has in English. So, this is pretty much the story about dictionary. And now we are in the summary. So, yeah. It is really interesting, but as far as the task of this video is to um, take a quick look of the Django tutorial. I'll kindly skip the whole story with the else if and functions even. Yeah, you can take a quick look at them later, probably. Okay, loops, they are interesting. Let's see. 
just some girls here and for name in girls we press tab enter one two three four print name enter and this is what we got rachel monica phoebe ola and you okay rachel monica and phoebe i know these girls from one tv series anyway and yeah this is the end of the introduction to python let's go to django what is django it's kind of a short summary here what we can do is simply say the first line the first sentence is the following django is a free and open source web application framework written in python yep that's it what is a web application framework why do we need a framework and what happens when someone requests a website from your server all well, these are questions you can answer if you go to the website so let's go for the django installation this is really where something interesting happens django installation First, we need virtual environment. Why do we need virtual environment? Can we eat it? What is a virtual environment? Let's install it and slowly answer all these interesting questions. So I will be using, um, what was the name of this beautiful thing? Uh, PyCharm, yes. So in PyCharm, I'll go to the terminal of PyCharm and I'll say, I'm currently in Python Advanced Folder. This is this one. So I'll say make your Django girls like here. And after I click enter and to wait some time, I'll see the Django girls directory here. And CD Django girls would bring me to that directory here. That's great. So command line Python 3m venv my venv. Okay. In my case, it would be Python only because I only have Python. Python 3 wouldn't do anything. M, then, then it would be Django, Girls, Virtual Environment. Django Girls, okay. Django Girls, then. Yep. Press Enter and I wait. What would happen? A lot of things would happen. Pretty much there should be some files installed here. See Django Girls Venv, include live scripts and PyVenv something. So in order to switch to this one from my venv, this is my environment here, I should do the following. I should do, I should simply write Python M mm, no, I should do the following. I mean Django Girls, I should do uh, Django Girls venv slash scripts slash activate. Enter. And now I'm in the Django Girls venv. If I want to see the libraries I have, I can write pip list. And these are the only libraries I have in the Django Girls environment pip and setup tool. Yeah, not a lot, but yeah. Warning, you are using pip version 19. However, version 20 is available. Uh, you should consider upgrading. Okay, as far as you are telling me to, to consider upgrading, I'll upgrade here. And see what's happening. Okay, it's quite fast. This is something I like about pip. This and the fact that its name is pip. I really like the name. And while well, it's successful installing, let's continue. Okay, installing Django. Now that you have your virtual environment started, you can install Django. Okay, well, they also they already told me to install the latest version of pip, and I already did it, so everything's perfect. So, how do we install Django? Well, they, they are telling us here to create a file called requirements.txt inside our Django Girls folder, no problem. File, requirements, txt, definitely. And in our Django Girls folder, and this simply write something like this. So, ignore extension. 
this would be a requirement for Django. So whenever we write something in this Django girls virtual environment, it would load this beautiful Django about 2.24. So in order to install the Django from the requirements, this is what we should run pip install our requirements txt and we should be making sure that we are in the Django girls folder. Mm, I just pressed control V and this wasn't supposed so, to do so. So pip install our requirements txt. See now it's starting collecting Django 2.24 using cache to Django. Okay, obviously Django is something big, so let's wait a bit. Pretty much we wait up to, up to the moment when we see successfully installed Django 2.24. Okay, depending on your internet. Okay, something about 42 minutes here, so it's really taking obviously a bit long. Okay, so Django is installed. Finally, we have this successfully installed Django. Let's see what is hidden in installing Django here. Uh, so, please check if your project path name contains spaces or no. Everything is perfect, Windows 10. Oh yeah. Yep. Let's start with our first Django project and see what's happening here. So create project windows. Django admin pi is a script that will create a directory file for you. Okay. Write Django admin pi and see what's going on. Well, something happened. Hmm. Definitely something happened. Oh, but Django admin pi, it opened Django admin pi here. Uh, what we want actually is a bit different. We want to run it. So, <laughs> let's think how to run it. Is it saying something? Mm, no. Setting up a database. Starting the web server. Okay, so let's start like this. Python manage py run server. Mm, manage py doesn't exist. So Python. Python uh, let's think okay project in Windows Python Django admin pi no such folder or file in the directory wow Jungle Girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, then go CD, change directory to Jungle Girls environment, and here we can say Python Django admin pi. This doesn't work as well. That's bad because this was an error and shouldn't have happened. Okay, after a further research, found the following that this Django admin pi here is actually the script that should create all these beautiful things. And these are the ways to run it. I mean, I can simply run it from here. No model named Django, that's something bad. Show in Explorer. 
try it like this. Will it happen? Will the magic happen? Django and Min exe. Nope. Nope. In the directory structure, you should also see the VAM directory created before. My VAM directory is called something else. Django girls, but the Django admin pie is not still there. Uh, let's see what should be on the Django admin pie. Management execute first command line from Django core import management. Okay. Then simply let's do it. A bit tough like this. Uh, cd dot dot and in Django Girl simply write from is not on a command key okay. we write Python and here I write from Django Core Import Management does it work? Did it change something? Oh no <laughs> okay so let's see what's happening here like pretty much what I understand from this tutorial is that we should run this Django admin pi, but in my case we cannot run it because there is an unresolved reference. So simply install a package, more actions, uh, uh, rename reference Django. Okay, it's really strange. Let's see. I already wrote pip list, so that's how it looks like. Okay, Django should be with big ones. Would it work like this? Because we have it like this. Run Django admin. Mm, no module named Django. Okay, we see this mistake here fixed. Let's see whether it will be fixed like this. Mm. Hmm. Still not working. Okay, so after installing Django like this, where is it? Pip install Django. Somehow magically this Right stuff here is not more underlined. I will remove the comments. And what I think now is that if I run it, it works. Yeah. And furthermore, did create it everything I wanted. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Show in Explorer. Well, I wouldn't say so, but Django Girls. Mm. Show in Explorer. No, still not. Uh, but anyway, the admin is okay, I guess. Django mm. let's return here to our terminal and simply say my site settings <laughs> okay I have decided to follow the tutorial in PDF because it works a bit more understandable there so be like this Django admin start project my site dot and the dot is like this here. Yay! Now did something change? Now everything is present. Okay, this was what was missing in the online tutorial. I didn't see this line, so I didn't have all these things in it settings. URLs, 
WSGI. So in the settings, it was said that we can change our time zone if we want, UTC. Nah, I'm not UTC, I'm Europe, Sofia. And the rest I'll leave them. Okay, so Jungle Girls tutorial English PDF, it's a bit more in details than the website, obviously, at least for me. So this is how it works. Or I should have uh, yeah found it here, actually. Yeah, okay. My bad. I mean, I didn't run this thing here. Because I already told that I have the project somehow. Okay. So close it and continue. So this is how you run actually your project. Django admin start project my site dot and it works. Probably I should put some alias here instead of this big thing, but so far I will not. And let's continue. We have this init settings URLs WSGI. Okay, changing settings. I already changed this to Europe. Uh, language code, no way. English is okay. Static URL. Okay. In settings PI, we look for static URL. It's static. And do we have static root? No, so I edit like this when the bug is true and allow, allowed hosts is empty, the host is validated against local host. La, 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 la. So let's see whether we have allowed host. I'm clicking control F here. So I'll leave it like this. Yeah, okay. Now set up a database. Setting up a database is interesting. My site settings py. So this is my site settings py. And let's look for databases. Okay, engine. This one. Name OS path join. Perfect. This is already set up. Yes. So now let's run the following in the console Python tree manage by migrate. Now the party starts. Python without a tree manage by migrate. Okay, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, and now an option to start the web server. Python tree only Python manage by run server and we have a server running and we get an attribute error list object has no attribute lower thank you thank you people what can be more beautiful than this that at least object has no attribute lower of course it doesn't have. So let's research this thing. What does it mean? List object has no attribute lower. Pretty sure I'm not the first one getting this error. Yeah, stake overflow. People were asking question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, rather quickly actually I found what was wrong. Honestly, I really don't want to go into debug into Django. It's a great framework, so I only changed the allowed hosts to 127.001. So it works like a charm, pretty much. Now you would see here uh, control and break. Yes, if I run it like this, run server. And then I go to 127.001 port 8000. I get the install work successfully. Congratulations, you are seeing this page because the book equals true. 
is in your settings file and if you have not configured any URLs true exactly what is described here so we are ready for the next step okay let's break control and see see how this thing is changed yes and let's go to the next step Django models well that's an interesting one okay about models there is something called object-oriented programming, which if you are a beginner, it will not be explained into this uh, video. So pretty much the idea is that they are things called objects and it is a collection of properties and actions. Okay, so pretty much they give an example with cat. If you ever have to give an example about object, there is a rule of thumb you should not be giving examples with animals because everyone is fed up with this give example with something else but okay they give example with cat that has color age and mood these are its properties it has an owner which can be assigned to another person and this is how an object looks like so in our case we have an object called post which has title text out author created date published date okay about Django, back to our real life stuff, we have um, blog posts. So pretty much the Django framework comes with the blog post object. So we can start creating the application. This is what they say, Python, manage py startup blog. Unfortunately for me, I'm on Windows. So for me, it will be Python, manage py startup blog, pretty much the same. Let's see whether it would happen or I would have to debug another 30 minutes. Nope, it worked. Well, and something changed. I mean, I saw it. Yeah, the directories and the files in our project should look like this. Yes, we have something called blog. Where do I look for this blog thing? It's here. Yeah, and we have admin, apps, models, tests and views. We have something dbsql sqlite 3, yes I have it, manage py, this beautiful thing which I also have, and my site. My site is this one, yeah. My venf, which is this one, Django Girls venf, and I'm in it. And the requirements txt, in which I have the Django guy. Yeah. So, after creating the application, we also need to tell Django that it should use it. Of course, we're going to tell it. We do that in the file my settings py. Open it in the code editor. My site settings py. We need to find installed apps and add a line containing block apps, block config just above the last one. So it should look like this. Okay. Unresolved reference block. Okay, import Django Girls block. Great. They haven't mentioned it here, but anyway, now it is there. Uh, take a look that our list finishes with comma. This is rather strange if you come from C sharp, VBA, or any other language, but rather useful if you come from Python. But if you come from Python, I really don't know what are you doing from this video. Probably just enjoying my English language skills. Anyway, continuing, create a blog post model. In blog models py file, we define all objects called models. This is the place in which we will define our blog post. So let's open blog models py. Blog models py. In the code editor, remove everything for it and write the code like this. So, there wasn't a lot actually. I'm trying to control Z it. I mean, create your models here. So, yeah, whatever. Let's copy paste the text and see what's happening. Okay. From Django Conf, import settings. From Django database, import models. From Django utils, import time zone. Will do. Mm -hmm. Post, it has models, 
it has an author, it has a title, it has text, create date and publish date. We have a function called publish and we have a function representing the post whenever we call it, it would show its title. Okay, dum door. Yes, this is a dum door. Double underscore. Okay, it looks scary, right? But not. Don't worry. We'll explain what these lines mean. Yeah, definitely. You can take a look and read what everything will means. Uh, yeah. So create tables for models in your database. This is interesting. So the last step here is to add our new model to our database. Yeah. So. Python manage py make migration block. Mm. So I was in the terminal and here I write Python manage py make migration block. Okay. It's, is this an error? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, Python manage py. Uh, manage py should be here. So Django girls. Mm -hmm. No module called Django Girls. Really? In settings py. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Let me think about it. I can do some kind of a cheat here. this now they, now we have the module called jungle girls and let's see what you're going to do my friend <laughs> from jungle girls import block yay <laughs> okay delete this one and try again Blog is not defined, really, a uh, secret key. <laughs> okay, that's why. <laughs> okay, and here I'll say this is my root. Mark directory as source root. Now it should be working. No module named Django Girls. I'll delete this and here I will see how it is now. Import block. Yeah, now it looks like okay. Block has not attribute apps, really. It has apps here, my friend. I see it. Mm. Block apps, block config. Out and enter. And let's try again. Block two. Okay. Yeah, it's like this. Make migrations block. Migration for block. Okay. Blog apps 
block config. Let's see how this thing was taught to be. It was uh, in the, your first Django project. Or oh, in the Django installation. No, it was in the first Django project somewhere here. Mm. When I was speaking of adding stuff. Okay, I'll save you some time and I'll do the research myself. Okay, I think I found a mistake. Yeah, should be like this. Beautiful and nice. Yeah. It was without the parentheses, not parentheses, but inverted commas. If they are called like this. Yeah. Apostrophes. So now it should work. Hopefully, yeah, it works. This is really a small mistake, but it took me some stable, I would say five minutes or so. So it's quite a lot. Uh, let's see where we were on the right side. Yeah, create model post. Yeah, it is there. So now we need to migrate Python manage py migrate block and the output should be as following. Yeah. Paste. No, 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 no. Okay. Python manage py migrate block. Okay, the migration is ready here. So now we are migrating it. What is a migration? A migration is actually something which should be described really well somewhere here. Exactly. Mm. First, we need to make Django know that there are some changes in the model and then we need to inform our database that there are changes in the model. So this is pretty much the migration. First step informing Django, second step informing database. Let's continue to the next chapter. Django admin, okay, to add, edit and delete posts. We've just modeled, we'll use Django admin. Let's open block admin py. So where is block admin py? Should be somewhere here. Yeah. In the code editor and replace its contents with this from Django Telala import admin from dot models import post admin dot site dot register post. Okay, let's see what's happening. As you can see, we import include the post model defined in the previous chapter. To make our model visible on the admin page, we need to register the model with admin set register post. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. And save this one and run this one. Python manage py run server. It's running. So let's go to this one slash admin. Oh no. Mm. <laughs> okay. You see a page like this, uh, but we haven't registered the post. No, we have actually. Okay, then what's the big deal? Hmm. A lot of errors. Error during template rendering. Could not parse the remainder. None from none. Okay, now research and out. Okay. So it seems that the answer here is white space matters. Change the following line. And let's go to settings py. There, where is settings py? I think in my side. And what are we looking for? Probably something like this. Uh, or widget.value. OK. 
Okay, so to my side in the settings by. Hmm. Base by. I could not pass the remainder. <laughs> okay, so I have found this say user Stralala side package Django template base and I found that there are a lot of equals known like this. So find next. And here in Stack Overflow I see some interesting answers saying that order matters, white space matters, whatever. So find the current document. Mm, I'll try to replace them automatically once and see whether it would work. So like this. Replace all. Close. Save. And try again. Okay, control break. Mm. Now try again with the run server. Okay, so here let's go with admin. Nope. Still mistake about parsing the error. So still. Okay, this is the error as it was shown exactly in here. So where is this one? It is in this one template. Okay, so copying, going here, control and O, input HTML. Okay, it is used by a program, of course it is used by a program, I'm using it. Okay, mm. once again, great work. Nope. Uh, I'll probably also have to stop it from here. Uh, control and stop. Okay. Control and O. Going. Where was it? Ah. Okay. It's gonna be really a big video. Yeah. Okay. Run server. Going here, I'm going to the admin, copying uh, this beautiful part, closing. So I actually, I mean, Control Shift and T. I'm not going to close it here. I'm going to close it just here. So pause. Now going to Notepad file open and in notepad what I'm going to do is find this template copy paste it is used by a program find a different location okay without the widgets okay this is in the Django template and something about the input is a mistake yeah, this one. Uh, this is how it should be. None. I think this is the difference. If it works, I'm going to upload the guy at Stack Overflow. Let's see. I mean, yeah, it works. Going back to Stack Overflow and uploading. And avoiding the question as well. Yeah. Or I can write, yeah, I'll write a better answer, like saying where is it or. No, it's okay. Yeah, the question actually helped us work. So let's go back to our beautiful stuff here and continue. Okay, time to look at our postmodern. Remember to run Python. Okay, great. To log in, you need to create a super user account that has control over everything on the site. 
go back to the command line tab, type python manage py create super user and press enter so here yeah uh, username wouldn't be Ola. Username would be Vitoshi Academy. Email address review vitoshiacademy.com. That's my real email address. Password. I entered a password. Really easy one. And obviously, it told me this password is too common. This password is entirely numeric. Uh, bypass password validation and create user anyway. Well, my answer is yes, don't do this at home. And we have a super user created successfully. Okay, obviously my password was really easy. Yeah, okay. Return to your browser, log in with the super user's credentials you chose. And you should see the Django admin dashboard. Great. Run server. And username Vitush Academy password. Hopefully, I didn't forget it. I'm saving it, and it looks a bit ugly, I would say. Definitely not as fancy as this one. And it's a good question. Also, the application names are somehow broken. I guess I broke them somehow. Yeah. And I guess the reason for this is installing an old Django. Yeah. Because, yeah. I'll stop now and I'll try to fix it so it looks as fancy as this one. I mean, really, no CSS looks bad. Let's stop a bit and see what's going on. And actually, it happened like a magic, to be honest. I didn't expect it would work so so great. Uh, I found a way to install a better version of Django. It's as easy as Python minus mpip install u Django. It's in the docs djangoproject.com, how to upgrade version. And it fixes a lot of unpleasant stuff that I had, like this kind of... Uh, Think I should have searched in Stack Overflow the difference between uh, some stuff. So pretty much the difference between the space putting here and no space, like it was difference between space none, like this and like this. I'll delete it now. So pretty much I uninstalled Django 2.212 and I installed back uh, Django trip. 05 so now when we go to here and click pip list we see django 3.305 so take home message don't follow blindly this course pretty much think when you do stuff don't follow my lead and install all versions of django because they're breaking they were probably quite okay when this was written but now it requires other stuff okay let's run our server run server and see the beauty here this is how it looks like and yeah, this is definitely different it looks actually good it looks also good if you look it into a window into a mobile phone like this can go here inspect and you can say uh, like iPhone X it would look like this iPad it would look like this or a Moto G4 like this whatever you want iPhone 6, 7, 8 like this yeah and on Chrome it would look like this okay let's go back and see what we have here. Go to posts and experiment a little bit with it. Add five or six blog posts. Don't worry about the content. It's only visible to you in your local computer. You can copy and paste some text from this tutorial to save time. I'm copying this. Make sure that at least two or three posts, but not all, have the published data set. 
date it will be helpful later okay so posts you see how many stuff are changing here in the server it's getting static getting phones getting admin so author British Academy test how to declare Excel range in VBA okay current date publish date save Let's see what they, they told us. Make sure at least two or three blog posts have the published data set. Okay. A post, alter me, indirect function in a string, variable in Excel, publish date, time, midnight. Okay. Or indirect function okay save another post mm, blah save another post blah blah and it wouldn't have it so i think and another head post here blah 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 and okay leave it like this quite okay and let's continue if you want to know more about Django admin you should check Django's documentation yes definitely but next time this is probably a good moment to grab a coffee or tea or something to eat to re-energize yourself okay so I'll see you in a few seconds for you and I guess 15 minutes for me so let's continue after the tea or coffee for me and I don't know what for you so now about time for deployment until now the website was only available on your computer now we will learn how to deploy it mm -hmm. hmm. I'm just wondering okay installing git I already have git starting out git repository okay I'm going to skip this completely Python Anywhere API token. Okay, this one is do it yourself, I guess. Although it would be interesting. Yeah, but no. Okay, I mean, my website will be only available on my computer. So, yeah, first website, well, first web page homepage for your blog but first let's learn a little about Django URLs okay URL is a web address in our case this is our URL here this one here uh, how do URLs work in Django well obviously let's open my site urls.py okay my site URLs pi and they explain everything here. Some import URL patterns admin admin site URLs. Yeah. Okay. Changed I'll change a bit. Uh, my site URL path. Okay. I'm changing it completely. And I'm continuing block URLs, create a new empty file named urls.py in the block directory. This is how you create Python file, urls, okay, urls.py, and it should be looking like this. We are importing the Django function path and all of the our views from the block application. We don't have any yet. But we'll get there in a minute, definitely. Okay. And we add our URL pattern with the views. These are where the views are. Somehow. Okay, try to visit it. And we'll see some sort of not available okay i'm 
going to run the server. Oh no. Blocks. Views. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mojo object has no attribute post lists. Mojo block views object. Yeah. This is what it says. Don't worry. Okay, it is actually pretty useful. It's telling you that there is no attribute post lists. Definitely here. There is no such attribute. So control C to break it. I just broke it. Then you need to restart the server. Okay, this is pretty much the server, so everything's okay. So time to create the views. Let's see what we can do. Mm. And we are approaching the end. So a view is a place where we put the logic of our application. Yeah, pretty meaningful. It will request information from the model you created before and pass it to the template. There is MVC, but this is something model view controller framework, but this is something really a bit more advanced. So let's continue. Views are placed in the views py. Yeah, here we will add our views to the views py file. So this is what we have here import render. Yeah, definitely nothing, just these comments here. And let's create a view as the comment suggests and the following minimal view below it. Yeah. So post list, okay. Just two empty lines and it returns render requests on block post list HTML. Okay. Save the file, go and see what you got. Another error, I believe there is another error, so I'm not going to do it. And we can see that the template does not exist. But still, let's take a quick look, it wouldn't hurt. Yes, I think so. Will it be template? Yeah, template does not exist, this is what it says. Okay, closing and continuing. To what is a template, you may ask. I doubt that someone would ask what is a template, but this obviously a format is described in a language called HTML. Yeah, what is HTML? Your first template, block templates, block directory. Okay, block uh, templates. And here, call it block. Okay. So block templates block. You might wonder why we need two directories called block. As you will discover later, this is a useful name and convention that makes life easier. Yeah, okay. Let's see how the website looks now. Try restarting your server. Okay. Run server. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we need to create all this post list HTML in the block. Okay, this is something I forgot. Sorry. And now save even mentioned like this H1 Vidush Academy dot com. run and this is how it works h2 my website if I press control f5 real time it simply changes 
Thank you for watching the review. You can write here. For watching this video, Control S over here, F5 over here. Real time changes. Okay, let's go back here. Yeah, we are perfect. Okay. Okay, they tell us some better ideas than self promoting my website. Let's see how they would look like. Hi there, it works. And some explanation about the tags and other stuff. Customizing your template. Okay, Vitosh Academy. And they already put like a whole stuff here. Let's see. Okay, Jungle Girls block. I'll leave it like this. My first post, my second post. Yeah, okay, let's see. Jungle Girls, my first post, my second post. Hmm. Yeah, pretty much the same like this one. No CSS. One more thing deploy. Deploying to GitHub. I'm not going to deploy to GitHub because I want to do this video in a reasonable time not into one hour 30 minutes or something but so far it's one hour and six minutes let's see okay django rm and query set we're somewhere here what is a query set a query set is in essence a list of objects of a given model so let's see python manage py shell okay Control pulse Python manage py shell and we get this interactive console. Great. What we can do here is the following post objects o yeah okay we don't see the objects and the post is not defined this means we have to import the post so okay so post is not defined but this is an expected error so we need to say something like from block dot models import post yeah and now post object o these are our query sets first second third okay can we refer to them as only take the first one yeah something like this for something in post dot objects dot all Okay, one, two, three, four. Print this something. And this is this is our post. First one, how to declare Excel range in VBA. Second, the indirect function in string variable in Excel. Third one, fourth one, fifth one. Sheet to activate, and this is how it ends. Okay. So create object. This is how you create object in the new post object database. Okay. Let's simply copy this. Post objects create, alter me, title, sample title. Okay, I'll write British Academy here. On the same place of the title. Some self promotion is always okay. I guess me is not defined okay what was my username in the admin Vitosh Academy mm. or Vitosh it's a good question Vitosh is not defined mm -hmm. oh yeah if I have forgotten it, I can use users objects all. 
but first I should import users, okay, and then I'll see what users do I have. Uh, okay, Vitush Academy is the user, so author Vitush Academy like this one. But it should be, of course, as a string like this. And uh, cross outro would be user is a nice thing. Okay, to me. Mm. Title text. Let's see, let's see. How do we do that? Okay, me. Oh, they are actually solving this problem that I'm having now. So, me will be equal to user objects uh, dot get username equals Vitush Academy. Okay, user is written with one like this. Okay, uh, and one point between the get. Yes, and now author me. Okay, yes, and now we can say whether it work. Post objects o. Uh, this is the last one. Post videoshakademy.com. Yeah. Add more posts. Nah, okay. And filter objects. Okay, a big part of query sets is the ability to filter them. Okay, post objects filter alter me. Okay, all of those. Uh, you can see the ones with VBA, that's a good idea in this field. Uh, title contains this equals VBA. Yeah, one, but it's okay. Or title contains equals Excel. I think there were two. Yeah, or len title contains. See, there are two. Yeah, okay. So Let's do some time zone stuff. Uh, post objects filter, publish date, LTE, less than time zone now. Uh, okay, I'm doing, I'm also copying this one. It's a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Not published, but we can change that. Uh, first, get an instance of the post we want to publish. Okay. Uh, and getting an instance of the post is like this. Okay. Like copy. Enter. And post matching query does not exist. It's a quick question of why. Uh-huh. Okay, probably let's try again this one. Oh, I actually have something. So post. Okay, sample title is because I changed a bit the title. It was because of this. What did I tell him? Like uh, self promotion or something? Yeah, okay. Uh, instead of sample title, I just call it like this. Okay, I'll, for, I'll simply make another one with sample title. That's the easiest way. 
uh, like, uh, like this. So I change the title in my okay, and now when I want to refer a post, it will be like this. And if I say post, it would uh, show the title. And this one is actually because of the double under of string. Well, let me see where I can show it somewhere. Mm. Uh, I'm speaking about my site init no settings no URLs no mm. models yeah about this one you see self title or if I want to change it a bit it can be hello plus self title and let's see whether it will work so post Okay. Mm. Yeah, okay, I have to restart everything, but after some time we would hit a hello plus save title. Uh, or I can simply try like this and then write post again. No. Anyway, let's continue. It would after some time this hello be shown I guess and let's see here post dot publish okay it is published and we can order the objects or we can make some complex queries yeah Let's make a complex query. Post objects filter, publish date, time, less than time zone now, and order by publish date. And we have these two in our query. Okay. This is really powerful and lets you write quite complex queries. Well, true. And exit. Let's continue with dynamic data in templates okay okay concerning dynamic data in templates pretty much we have different pieces in place the post model is in models PLPY which is here and should I leave the hello yes I'll leave the hello just for just for the sake of it and we have post list in view py so the problem is that uh, we should find a way that the models are connected to the templates because actually this is what the views are doing so long story short just scrolling a bit I'm going to explain everything go to blog views copy here and uh, go here now instead of what we have simply control a control v and do it so go next what did we do pretty much we imported post we imported time zone we imported render and we have this post list which is the post list.html which is uh, here yeah and furthermore this is the posts they are ordered then they should be rendered now how do we render them we should go to the post list html here and what we should do is actually do something magical like this for each post in posts do the post and for like this uh, diff mm, where should I put it did I take the body yeah. like this Bit 
more beautiful. Like this. Yeah, okay, it's a simple loop. In for inward and for typo. I doubt it is a typo. Simply, I guess, our Python advanced pie charm didn't recognize it. Uh, okay, let's run the server. See what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yep, there they are. Indirect function in a string variable of Excel and sample title. Title. Yep. All of them are here. The two titles in our posts, and the posts are taken from here. Post object filter. You can also do it like this. Post objects are dot o. Will it work? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, it was actually really lucky, but it worked. And now we have all of those. You see, like I didn't have even to restart the server. Sometimes, I mean, in this case, Django does a lot of work for us. Every here. Yeah, that's all. All of those are here. Pretty much all. And let's continue. Okay. There is something about a break, so. Okay, take a break and then we will continue with making the things pretty. Yep, okay. So let's make our stuff pretty with CSS scanning style sheets. So, installing bootstraps. Okay. Pretty much our post lists, we are going to add a link reference to the head section. That's really the easiest way to install bootstraps. It makes this reference, and if you click on this one, like this, like this, this is what you would see. Like a lot of interesting stuff, pretty much. Saying that uh, whenever you have, for example, each title or something, or okay, or Nah, this was the wrong one. Let's say this one. Mm. Like this. Yeah. Whenever you have right, it says this is what happens with right. Glyphicon align right. Whenever you have title, then the title is a bit different. And it actually really makes everything a bit more beautiful, like I would call it Twitter style. Okay. So let's go to our console. Mm. Actually, yeah. And yeah, somehow it looks better. I would say, or not. Hmm. So, well, it depends how you define better. I mean, here it looks beautiful. Here, yeah, okay, a bit bigger and somehow good. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, something about static files. Uh, static files are all the CSS files and images. Uh, we create a folder named static inside the block app. Okay. So, block. We have migrations. So far we have only one, this one, explaining us what we did. 
with the post and another folder here called static yep and there we write css obviously new directory css and in the css we write the block css file new file block css great uh, ignore yeah, okay here is something that tells us like what to do whenever we have h1 ref or h2 ref let's see where well, there would be a change okay mm. No, because the static wasn't loaded in post list HTML in the code editor and add this line at the very beginning of it. Like this. Okay. Still no change. Okay, load static. Okay. Yeah, in order to add the static thing somewhere in the head, I'd also request that the static should be added. something like this at the end cool. copying and pasting just to make sure everything's okay and the Django block mm. okay I'll break it and then make it and then see what's going on wow looks fancier yeah not that fancier yeah, okay, we need some padding to the left because of this. And customize our headers. Okay, customizing the headers in uh, this one. I'm going to close a bit everything to the left. Closing this and closing this. Uh, this would be edit as well. And let's see. You see it automatically changed. What about the headers? Fold Google APIs. Style sheet. Not sure. I'll break it and then make it again just to make sure everything's good. And I'm on the last one. Uh, yeah, okay, headers are not probably what is expected. As before, check the order and place before the link to. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, this is called Lobster, and we need to add it to the CSS. Now it should be changed. Wow, yes. Now it is changed. Continue. Uh, template block. Block list uh, HTML. Div class page header. Okay. Jungle Girls block. change a bit like this let's see okay you see like uh, this kind of a uh, line appearing here changing okay about the posts a bit uh, what should we do about the post published ref and text okay 
make sure that it is inside the loop. And this is the loop here. And see what would happen. Mm, I'll copy, I'll break this here and run again the server F5. Mm -hmm. Okay, it didn't change, of course, because I haven't added all this fancy stuff in the CSS. What's the idea of the fancy stuff? Okay, I'm explaining. Whenever we say page header here, we refer to the class page header in the CSS. Well, this class is so far not existing. Anyway, if I put it and I refresh, there's something changing automatically. So I'll simply take the whole CSS, Control A, Delete, Control V, and now it should look a bit beautiful. Not exactly as I expected. Okay. Mm. Okay. Simply, I have decided I have deleted the H A, H one and H two in the body with padding left. So I thought that they are it here, but they are obviously not. So let's try again. Okay. Did this somehow ugly? I guess there is something broken now. Mm -hmm. Replace this with this. Okay, let's see what we are replacing. Give class content container. Should be something broken. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot should be broken because I don't see this. Let's try again with the CSS. somehow restart and see whether I have managed to get it as expected. Oh yeah, okay, the color is a bit different. Published now, how do I declare stuff? But it looks okay. It's strange why this color is different, quite different than the orange. At least on my screen. But this is it. Okay, let's see what we put inside here with the big loop. Uh, and for this is something okay. Pretty much we said for all posts in posts, and the posts were imported by the view. Yeah. Posts, post objects all. Render request blocks post list HTML post post. Uh, for each view, for each post, new class, get the date of the post, write published, and write a publish date property. Uh, post publish date should be. Uh, I'm just wondering where should it be? It's not in views, it should be in models. This is our class posts, yes, and this is our publish date, created date, text, title, author. And yeah, this is pretty much publish date. Then uh, we finish the diff, we write the title, put a line breaker, pretty much this thing here post text line breaker and then we end the loop and we do it for all of those if we decide to filter not all but 
the first two as in the example and this we only have two and with these two we are okay it looks quite okay actually yeah let's go to the next one template extending create a base template base html in block template block okay block templates block mm -hmm. new file name base html so low static and plenty of other stuff which we already hit okay Then in base HTML, replace the whole body with this. Okay. It's quite easy. Replacing the body. You might notice that this replaced everything from to end of with block content and block. But why? You just created a block. Thanks. That's my idea. You use the template text block to make sure an area that will have HTML inserted in it. The HTML will come from another template that extends this template. We will show you how it is done. Okay. So let's simply go to post lists and write everything here delete this is how it looks so pretty much we have this one here and this one here yeah and we also name it block content here post list right at the block content whether it would be okay let's see aha uh -huh. And also add the extends block base HTML. Okay, let's uh, say quickly what what actually is happening. So pretty much, uh, pretty much, mm, we created the base template here, here. We say, hey, there is some kind of block content. So, whenever there is a block content, look for something. In this one, the one post list, it says extend block base HTML. So, actually, first post list is actually the one loaded from the model, not from the model, but from the view. So, this is how it works. The server asks for block post HTML, it finds block post HTML post list HTML in the post post list HTML it goes and it extends the base one so extending means it loads first the base one but here somewhere in the base one it says hey there is some block content and this is the block content we are looking for would it work that's a good question I will add something so we know that it's a uh, Working Django Girls blog from postlist.html. Let's see whether it would work okay. And now control C. Run server. Okay, now the time. Yes, Django Girls blog from postlist.html. And if not, it's it. Okay, I'll remove it. Or I can write my name somewhere, as I said. Some I don't know, position. Marketing is always good. Yeah, like this. From bitushacademy.com. So, once again, to summarize the view post lists calls this URL block post list HTML. This one, it says automatically on the first line, kindly extend block base HTML. We enter block base HTML, it loads this one here. And here it calls the block content. 
which is in this one log content. So kind of I don't know fancy or no fancy. I don't know. Let's see. Extend your application. Okay. Create a template link to for to a post detail. Block templates, block post list HTML. Okay, adding a link. This is the link h2 href post title. And it would be actually leading to a post title. Uh huh. So, yeah, okay. Link created. Control C, Control V. Uh, but we should also fix the URL because it's not enough. So block URL, let's see. Uh, okay, URL patterns. Now we have views post list, name post list, and a new path with the details. Okay, furthermore, add a post detail view in block views py here. Okay. Okay, this is something interesting. This is called primary key. And in order to understand this, you need some kind of a basics of databases understanding. Pretty much it's saying like post objects get primary key equals primary key. And yeah, for the moment, simply forget about it. Okay, simply copy paste. Okay, uh, get object of 404. Import this one nicely. And see what's going on. Okay, create a template for the post details. In post details, create the template. Uh, we need this file. In block templates block, new file. Post details and simply copy paste. As far as this also extends block base HTML. Yes, once again we are extending base HTML. Hey, this tutorial is, let's see if I have written it. I'm just joking. I, it's really a nice one. I mean, I wouldn't write it. In this in the context block, we want to display a post publish date if it exists, title and text. But we should discuss some important things, right? Okay, about the ifs, this is a condition. Like if it exists, then true. If it doesn't exist, simply skip it. This is what it says. And now we have deploy time. And in our case, it wouldn't be deploy time, but let's see. Uh, control C and I'll go again not yeah I'll go again here and I'll simply say all again so I want to have more stuff and not only these two and let's run the server and see you whether it works. Okay. Somehow it's not exactly, I guess, what I would need, but let's see. Uh, let's research it. Actually, it's okay. Like you see here, we have April 9th, 2020, midnight. It's not midnight, but it's okay. And we have April 20th, April 20th, 5.58 p.m. Yeah, this is a bit better. Uh, yeah, that's the idea about the ifs here. Like if post publish date, then write a post publish date. Okay, deploy time, updating static files on server. Skipping this as far as we're not deploying it anywhere. And go back to next. Django forms. The final thing you want to do on the website is to create a nice way to add and edit blog posts. Django's admin is cool, but it is rather hard to customize and make pretty. Well, yeah. 
which forms you have the absolute power over our interface. Okay, so block from py new Python file from the py and in block from py like this from Django import forms from the models in from post class post form two spaces you know to satisfy the grammar Nazi that I'm having here called pep8 or something just I'll show you now see pep8 expect two blank lines found one yeah so now yeah, a new class post form is added in the class meta within the class link to a page with the form okay this is how we do the link to the page with the form and this is how where we put it actually we put it uh okay i broke something i guess here sorry okay we put it here in our base html after loading the static we put some kind of a url so base html base html control a control v control s okay block url py in the code editor and add the line this one I'll simply did this one and uh, go to the url yeah views post new great so about the post new we need uh, to define this view somehow so in views py um, add this function okay post form it doesn't know what to do so we say hey, from dot forms import post form and currently it doesn't know what is dot forms and that's interesting okay i guess we should simply stop it here more actions post form more actions okay uh, post form is actually here on this one class post form mm -hmm. So this is what we are importing actually. And it's block forms. Oops. Okay, let's go here. Okay, let's forget about this and see what our editor is going to help us from block form, post form, model form. Okay. From block form and form post form. Yeah, okay. As far as it's happy, we are also happy. Yeah, URLs. I have updated the URLs. Further we go. Post form is updated on view. I'll put like two lines, I guess pep is against one line. Now we do the template. The template is uh, post edit HTML and it's in block templates block. So block templates block and it is post edit new file name post edit dot HTML. And in it, we also say like this extends block base HTML. And whenever we call the block content, we write a new post here. We use format post. Actually, now I'm thinking that if this tutorial is written for people who are completely unfamiliar about programming, we already mentioned here databases like post and get methods. I don't know, HTML, CSS, 
some Python, some classes, and if this is to be done in one day, I don't know how many people would be really, I don't know, would take home something, but probably the idea of the tutorial is, I don't know, to show what can be done, so it's okay, I guess. So continuing, uh, blog view py. Uh -huh. Block views py and this one. Post new request. I already have this one. Oh yeah, I mean it's written. Currently all we have is the following. In the post new, but okay, it should look like this. I'm just trying to see where the whole function is without explanations. It is here, yeah. so pretty much. Unresolved redirect more actions. Come on, control out enter. Uh, more actions. Why do I don't see like this here? The redirect mm -hmm. import redirect, which was a good one. Control S. Okay. Yeah, okay, from Django shortcuts, import, render, and redirect, great. And we also have some form validation that would work. I don't know where to put the form validation, but yeah, okay. Form validation is actually something with required fields. Uh, post details HTML. Yeah, okay. Post detail HTML look like this. Okay, go oh, cancel I'm just here. So block templates block post details HTML. Open block URL py and add this one. py and adding that one. See, it's really useful having the comma, so you don't have to edit at the end, the comma in the list of the last element. This is what I meant, having the comma. Okay, let's open blog views py in the code editor and add this at the, at the very end of the file, for sure. Another view, post edit, well, looks okay. Okay, looks almost exactly the same as post new, right? But not entirely. Okay. Okay, security. I will skip the security deploy time. And I think this should be all. Let's uh, run the server and see whether anything in our block works. Mm -hmm. Okay, new post. This is a new post here. Thank you for watching this big video over two hours. It will be over two hours, yes, I'm sorry. You can also edit over two hours. Indeed, it is big. Indeed, two hours is a lot of time. Okay, let's go here, back, and see. This is a new post here. Okay. 
Mm, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Mm, what do we say? What do we say? What's next? A little more stuff, and yeah. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show is something about the databases that we were using. Uh, our database is here, db.sqlite3. Uh, okay, what do we do with this database? We can show it in the Explorer, pretty much. And from here, try to open it with something. Uh, it would be actually tough to open it this way. So I'm going to copy the path. And I'm going to open my SQLite DB browser that looks like this. This is it. So here I can say file, open database, and I can navigate to this one. This is how the database look like in the project. So here is the blog post. And here we can say browse. And yeah, this is how it looks like our eight databases. So this is pretty much the back end. And yeah, if we want to go to the front end, front end is here. This is the front end. Uh, this would appear in the DB browser for SQL light. Thank you for watching and bearing with me all this time. Press save. Great. And now here we can click refresh and this is what we get. This is the front end. This would appear. This would appear in the browser for SQL Lite. I can edit it. I can say I simply say here, edit it, save, and in the database it would be edited as well. Yes. So. Thank you for watching, really. I mean, I hope you enjoyed it, although there were quite a lot of technical errors while I was doing this tutorial. And yeah, it happens. I mean, if you didn't understand a lot because you are a beginner, don't worry, this tutorial is actually taking quite a lot of different stuff, like starting from databases, to web frameworks, to Python programming, and it's really quite a lot. So simply use it as an idea what you can do with Django and how these kind of blocks work, that there is a database behind them. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and enjoy your day. Thank you from Vitoshi Academy. Bye bye.